guys, are you sure this is the right This show? place is creepy. Well, guys, it'll be fun. Got some big plans. You expect me to cut my hand to bring some vigilante ghost back from his grave? Man, you crazy. Play the damn game. I saw them die. They were nothing but rag dolls to him. He was relentless. What do you know about Devil Row? The children's ghost story? Well, most ghost stories have some basis in truth. The Deadly Night happened right out there. Jim? Jim Michaels? You no! are a no! God's name is your... I'm gonna take your life as a baby and fall! The witch brought him back from the dead to seek his revenge. Come home! Come home! Devil! Curse the bloodline of all involved. Paul's proud of you. My bloodline. Come home to us! I wanted to summon the so-called boogeyman of the south. I just let him play the game. You called for him! And he came! Some have dubbed him the Lua, the keeper of the graveyard, the giver of life, and the master of the dead. I built the skin version of the T-Rex. It looked like National Geographic went back in a time machine. Those things look real. Jurassic opened the doors for all movies. Steve Williams was a new type of guy who tried to raise some creative help. His cohorts. They were young and eager, willing to risk it all and face whatever dangers they're gonna face. Although he goofed around all day, he worked all night. Williams, on his own, put together a Tyrannosaurus skeleton. I was told not to do it by my supervisors, and I did it. That was going to change everything. Hi, my name is Susie Wallace. I want to solve the unsolvable. I want to bring resolution to the most haunting mysteries. Why are you smiling? I don't know. It's just my natural expression. What is it, Sophie? A college student named Jesse Wilcox has been missing for two days. When the world has a lot of hate, it's time to meditate. I'm going to be famous when I solve this case and become a big hero. I can't wait. It doesn't matter if you have five suspects or 500. More often than you think, the culprit is right under your nose. I'm Susie. Susie, Ohio's own Nancy Drew. Take us through your investigation. I remember learning about heroes in school, but I never thought I'd be sitting next to one. I just got chills. <laughs> Did you get chills? I just got chills. With everybody else in the world, we wear masks. Not with you, Susie. Never change, okay? I was wrong about you. Even though you saved the day, you still have no social life. Easy, Susie. I promise I'm not gonna tell anybody what I found. I have no idea what you're talking about. Jesse was wearing this hat the day he disappeared. You can tell me what happened. Life takes unexpected twists. You following me? They found more DNA evidence. Really? You can be the best criminal in the world, but you cannot outrun science. A new tragedy has struck. Even the most perfect plans don't always work out. You were my prime suspect. And my guy's following you for weeks. 
But eventually, a solution will present itself. Tracking your position via UAV. Over. We've got six Americans trying to escape the country. We need to send a unit to link up with them. Roger that. Hey, I have one mission objective. I say again, I have one. Objective. Need immediate extraction. What can you do? You have to make it to the top of that mountain. We have seconds here and they're evaporating fast. Hey, kid. Where are you going? It's not the house that's haunted. It's your son. There is something in there with him. There's something wrong with Daddy. These home. things are bad. Guys. He's got your feet. Don't oh. He's got your feet. Our family has been through a lot together. You told me that when I was ten, I was in a coma, but I don't remember being sick. We're ready to forget. Ever since then, I see crazy stuff in my dreams. Those are not dreams. It's happening again. Something is following us. I'm gonna need you to remain still. Hello? Hello? The further you travel, the riskier the journey becomes. Are you satisfied with the life that you have? Who did this to you? Your boyfriend? He's not my boyfriend. RG. Well, he tells you what to do? No, oh, he's a dealer. RG what? 
He was my mom's dealer. After she died, I ran errands for him. He liked the fact that I could pass in fancy hotels. What happened? He didn't like my attitude. He'd been up all night. Didn't like the way that I smelled. He said he knew where I was going and he'd beat me if I came back. And then what happened? He did. I think the best if you stay at Gracewood tonight. I'm gonna talk to Isabel. Gomez. Robbie Gomez. Welcome home, honey. Do you read now? What is this? It's classified. Coming with you. Oh, I'm sorry. You weren't invited. Oh. Bad, bad I think it's time I can't get enough. Playing with dangerous bad behavior. Bad, bad, bad behavior. They call it bad behavior. Why are you here? I got this situation where I need your help. I need bad friends. Was that the new guy? Is that sniper? Don't worry about it. I got a prescription skull. Well, Hawk guys, remember this face. Don't shoot it by accident. <laughs> <laughs> Terrorists have taken possession of nuclear missiles on a cargo ship off the coast. If these babies go off, it'll be World War III. To choose this life over friends, God! over family. It's time to get loud. Let's fly, baby! one you've got. Oh, it's way bigger than that. Average writers attempt originality, but the greats, great writers, steal. But your personal life seeps into your work. If you're asking whether my son's death has inspired my writing, the answer is no, I will not be writing about his death. I will be writing in spite of it. Good morning. You must be Bertie. So you're my tutor. Your father. He's the most revered writer in the country. My husband, the subject of your thesis. We're not here for him. So don't talk about his work. Don't talk about Felix. Follow those rules and you should be fine. It's only been two years since. Felix, Felix off limits. Don't do it again. You know Liam's a writer too. I've seen the novel. It's actually quite good. No, you're not the first. There have been incidents in the past. When you said I wasn't the first, what did you mean? I have a new novel, and I was wondering if you might be on hand for the final stretch. Thought you might like to help. 
We did all we could to save Felix, but it was too late. My husband was always hard to please. You're changing my work. I'm not. Who's the writer? This isn't about the writing. It was only ever about the writing, Leo. Why does he lock the door if he's got nothing to hide? I want to know. Don't you? It's like nothing you've written before. But at the ending, it feels like a different novel. Like it was written by someone else. Liam, good writers borrow. Great writers steal. <laughs>
Let me know if you change your name. I'm skating down the ice. I see an object fly by me. I'm like, kind of, you know, what is that? I take a glance, I'm like, it's a banana. Whatever happens, we gotta put our head down and shut our mouth, is what's wrong with our game. Akeem Alou claims that Flames head coach Bill Peters directed racist language at him. Hard stuff to talk about. Racism, it's an ingrained in the game. I had to keep my mouth shut and just move forward. It's a cultural problem within the sport of hockey that goes unchecked. Montreal's P.K. Subban wins the game. Meanwhile, 17,000 racist tweets were posted. It's meant for you to feel like you need to stay in your place. This is our sport. We go all the way back to the 1800s in the Colored Hockey League. So don't let anybody ever tell you this is not your sport because this is exactly where you're supposed to be found reference to a hockey league out of Nova Scotia, an all-black hockey league, CHL, or Colored Hockey League. One of the interesting things about the Colored Hockey League, the innovation in terms of the sport. They had adopted the white rules and had a looseness in their interpretation of these rules. Herb Carnegie was the best black player never to play in the NHL. They weren't ready for a black hockey player. I don't want people to go through that. What's the next kid coming up in this game? How can I help that kid to not experience what I went through? My dream is that you can be yourself. I'm out here. Yeah, I'm a black hockey player. And I'm going to show you. I think it's really important that we reclaim our place in history. It's something we have to do for the younger generation coming up. It's time for hockey to evolve. All right, we're ready, we're rolling. So, Rose Tyron, why do you think I'm doing this? I think you're crazy. <laughs> when you were younger, did you envision your life? No. When the 30th person said to me, you're my role model, and I think, does that mean because I've survived till I was 90 or because I'm still having a good time? My teacher accused me of plagiarism. She thought some grown-up had written my poem. I thought, oh, well, maybe I can be a poet. You took something that was unpleasant and turned it into something pleasant. Bill Styron and I had a fabulous winter together in Rome. So we thought, oh, well, let's get married. But I didn't think it was going to last more than a couple of years. When he was pushing 60, he crashed. The first signs I saw of it were after he wrote Nat Turner. Jimmy Baldwin encouraged me more than anyone else to plunge into that kind of narrative mode. He was so depressed. My book turned him into a far more heroic figure than the actual Nat Turner was, because I gave him human dimension. To whom did he humanize? To the white community? He was contemplating suicide. It was very scary. But he recouped his life, came back, and he had 15 good years. Maybe writing saved him. Jack Kennedy wanted to meet Bill, and so we were invited to the Nobel Prize dinner at the White House. Jackie said, once in a while, we sail to the vineyard. When we come up next summer, would you like to come with us? And after that, they came to our lawn every year. scared in any of your Amnesty International missions? Yes, I was. I got myself into a lot of things. What started your interest in human rights? Going to the Soviet Union in 1968 and learning about the gulags. And I was awakened. That's when I became a journalist. You have a kind of animation and good cheer and life force. 
I had planned to live at least as long as my mother. She decided to hang it up at 102, but I may not. We'll see. <laughs>